Alright, this is Cloud Gaze for Justin Timberlake. I did get a lot of people that wanted me to do this, um, either fans or, you know, people that like Justin Timberlake. I'm also going to do one for Britney Spears next week, just for, you know, added enthusiasm. But it was requested by a viewer that I do this. Um, it's kind of interesting to see Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears because one has a different point of view from the other one as far as legacy readings are concerned. So you'll see that in both of their readings if you want to cross-reference them when the Britney one comes out. So just, just remember that when the Britney one comes out. Revisit this one so that you know what I'm talking about at the end where I talk about their legacy if they weren't um, If they weren't performers, okay, so it's a it, it's a big difference. All right, so let's See we have the cards for your viewing pleasure because I can't really show you my notes on my uh, Maps, you know, let's see we have the nine of wands which is defense and overcoming obstacles. We have the four of swords, which is rest. We have three of swords, which is sorrow and feeling let down. We have the four of pentacles, which is solidarity. And we also have the six of swords, which is escape. All these have something to do with the chart, I assure you. But um, with Justin's chart it looks like somebody crying so what popped into my head if you want to check out the song is uh, Cry Me a River so I was like that has everything to do with his chart so it's kind of crazy to me to even think about that anyway I'm gonna get into the chart as a whole so you can follow along and check the bottom description if you want to see what they all mean so that you kind of stay ahead of the game, okay? So we have the sun, which is in Aquarius. It's a 10th house of legacy. We have the moon, which is Sagittarius, in the 7th house of partnerships, which is interesting. <laughs> it's a very emotional partnership, I feel. So, um, we have Mercury and Pisces in the 10th house of Legacy. We have the Venus in Capricorn in the 10th house of Beliefs. So, strong beliefs here. Uh, Mars in Aquarius, which is 10th house of Legacy. We have Jupiter in Libra in the 5th house of Creativity. So, pretty balanced creativity. And then we have Saturn in Libra, the fifth house of creativity as well. So there's a bunch of truth there. There's a bunch of balance there. Then we have Uranus with um, Scorpio in the, in the seventh house of partnerships. We have Neptune and Sagittarius in the 8th house of intimacy. We have Pluto in Libra in the 6th house of responsibilities. And then we have the Lilith in Scorpio, 6th house of responsibilities. The North Node, Leo, the 4th house of roots. So there's, <laughs> there's sort of kind of the a legacy here that also is kind of going to be on the low end, but I feel like it's going to be part of history, if that makes sense. So there's, there's going to be a bit of that. The empty houses were the first house of identity, lack, lack of identity, personality, wearing a fake mask. We have the second house of values with feeling of insecurity and instability. We have the third house of communication, difficulty dealing with logic. We have the eighth house of, well, I can skip that one. Uh, so the eleventh house of self is difficulty maintaining friendships. 
because you're you're kind of not sure what people's motives are, usually with the 11th house being empty. So we have the 12th house of transcendence. Can't cope with stress or fear. Overly pressured. So that kind of, it, it's kind of scary to think about somebody not having a 12th house. Especially in like the music industry. It's, it's really kind of crazy because usually you need that in order to stay balanced and to perform and to do certain things with your, um, you know, your personality, your business, and your branding. So, it's, it's kind of scary, you know, it's like, that's kind of weird. Okay, so, then we have the symbols that go with this. So, if you're looking at the sky and you ever think, oh, what, what do the symbols mean? It's actually how the stars look in the sky, like, you can make the connection between um, what's what, you know, or how the sky looks, because if it's a circle, there's, like, edges to it, so it shows certain symbols and stuff on edges of things, so, you know. So, we have a corn staff, which is, like, a corn maze. We have an arrow. We have an umbrella. We have two flutes. We have the hand an elephant, another hand with a serpent, and we also have another arrow. So there's there's a lot of imagery to very memorable, but at the same time, very deceitful truths about somebody. So it could be about himself, or it could be about other people. It could be keeping secrets. Because the serpent doesn't really show up in too many readings. And I've read a lot of charts, so... The serpent's kind of out there as kind of a uh, kind of a temptation in order to get somewhere else. So if you read into that, you kind of know what I'm talking about. But um, <laughs> but it's kind of interesting to see the serpent in this case. It raises a lot of questions, and I know for a lot of people that they might be like, "Oh, that might mean this, or that might mean that." But I'm not really going to read too much into it in this. But if you have your own conspiracy, I'm sure that they're either confirmed or they're kind of sought after at this point. So, you know, um, just so you know. So if Justin Timberlake wasn't a performer, what would he be instead? We have teacher, preacher, scholar, a student, a linguist, a translator, a novelist, a storyteller, a comedian... A magician on a small scale, scale um, like kids' parties. A recording artist or a DJ. We have a telephone operator. Um, an agent. Traditionalist, which is kind of like a historian. Um, gossip writers, columnists, organizers of big and small organizations. News broadcasters psychologists, analysts, talk show hosts, radio operators, we have, uh, let's see, travel agents, healers, practitioners, uh, restaurant and hotel workers, and, uh, let's see, we have, I don't even know what that means, all the past, experts. So all of us, I, I feel is like kind of like a chiropractor, but it deals with like your electrical uh, tension in like your shoulders and stuff like acupuncture. Then we have charity workers and sh social workers. So it's, it's kind of small scale. Um, and I, and I just know like right after this, people are going to be asking, why didn't you do the Britney Spears one? But um, with the Britney Spears one, I feel like I need a little bit more energy. Um, so, you know, it's one of those things. But also with Justin Timberlake, with everything with this, um, with the careers that he could have, it also brings me back to that movie that he did. He starred in Bad Teacher with um, Cameron Diaz and... Uh, 
Phyllis from The Office. I always forget her name, but I love her as an actress, too. But, um, yeah, it reminds me of that because of, like, the teacher-student stuff and uh, what he could be as a normal person, which is kind of funny. Um, but, yeah, I, I feel like it's kind of a, you know, it's a well-rounded type of chart. I wouldn't say it's a bad chart, but usually it's more on, like, the average level. So there might be a lot of obstacles, or there might be a lot of shortcomings. But I feel like if there's persistence, it could, like, constantly be, like, a rewarding thing to be a musical artist for Justin. But it's, you know, at some points, you know, it's it's kind of like, it's up to timing also. There's a lot of uh, 10th houses here. So it was like kind of uncertainty with the Aquarius and the Pisces here. So it's kind of like you're stuck in the middle always trying to be like, do I want to be a teacher or a mu musician? You know, and that could be a bit of, you know, conflict of interest also. So, you know, it depends of like what you're passionate about too. So anyway, if you like this, leave a like, and if I get a million views or a million likes, I will post the full chart of Justin Timberlake. Um, you know, it's a very interesting thing to see, like, a full chart of, like, a performer, and usually I don't like doing celebrities because it kind of, you know, raises a lot more question about certain other celebrities that do the same thing. But I feel like, you know, it's it's just gonna, it's gonna make you crazy. Okay, so um, I'm not gonna do too much of that, but, you know, it's nice. I usually just do YouTubers, so it was nice to do a celebrity, you know, fun stuff. Anyway, thank you for watching, and hopefully this helps you out in some way, shape, or form, or, you know, raises more questions, I feel, but it's, uh... It was a pretty good reading. I, I enjoyed it, so, you know, we'll see what happens. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, alright?